Have you ever felt like nature study is a complete foreign language to you? Maybe you've heard of these really idealistic moments. You take your children out for a nature walk and everyone is just frolicking in the fields in a linen dress and a sun hat and having the best time and the kids are like picking flowers and the mom is just so relaxed and the kids are asking her all these questions like, mom, what is this bug? And this is so cool, can I take this home? This is like the best day ever. And that's just not your reality because you feel like when you go outside and you're taking your kids for a nature walk, maybe they're asking you what stuff is and you don't know what it is. Or maybe you are wondering, what is this plant? What is this bug? And actually have no idea what it is. And you're just not feeling confident about teaching this to your kids. But you really want to because it sounds like a great idea. That's you, stick around because I have some ideas for you. Okay, so why is it that so many of us feel this way, feel so little confidence in our ability to teach our kids about nature? And it's because we weren't really taught this, at least most of us, we're not really taught this in, if you went to public school like I did, we had science classes, we had science as a subject, you know, pretty much every year from elementary to high school, but it wasn't the type of science that we think of when we think of nature study. What I really remember from elementary school is picking like one animal. I remember I picked a dolphin. I remember my sister picked like a loon. That was like our state bird. You would pick like one animal and then research everything about that animal and write like a research paper about it. I think we did that in third, fourth or fifth grade or something. And we were supposed to be like scientists, becoming an expert in that field. So then in middle school and high school, we had biology, chemistry, um, maybe geology. I didn't have geology in high school, but maybe some people did. So we had biology and it wasn't like we were learning about wildlife, like the way they live or the wildlife in our area or the plants in our area or how to identify them or anything like that. It was more like, and this is what I have the strongest memories of, dissecting the animal and not learning about like its mating strategies or you know where we're likely to find it, how it lives, that sort of thing. We were learning about protons and the nucleus of the cell and DNA and Punnett squares and how that works and like in chemistry, like the periodic table, like it was almost like we were breaking things down into the smallest possible unit. And we didn't have this idea that nature and, you know, nature works together as a whole and like studying the whole animal and the whole plant and how that interacts with the environment and what it does on a yearly basis or throughout its life cycle and things like that. I mean, that just wasn't what we did. So I don't know if everyone else had a similar experience to this, but I've talked to a few people and they did. And either they also can't identify, you know, like the 10 types of trees in their yard or like the 10 different birds in their neighborhood or really like anything that isn't, you know, like something that you buy at the grocery store or something. Some, something you plant, planted in your garden, but more like something you're gonna find on a nature walk. So when we're supposed to start teaching this to our kids, it's like, where do you even start? This is so overwhelming. So really this type of training that we got was geared toward you know, scientists. Like this is what scientists would be studying in, in their labs. But I'm not sure that that's the right approach because Let's just face it, most of us aren't going to be scientists, but most of us, I think, would benefit from knowing a thing or two about, you know, what's what's outside, basically, what it does, when it does it. Uh, I think that's what most people want to know. Plus, I think that if this had been the way I was taught growing up, I think I would have considered myself to be more of a science person because I just thought of science as this really abstract thing that had more to do with formulas than you know the 
paying attention to the trees on a walk when really, you know, I think we should be teaching our children that, uh, you know, science and nature is something that they can really understand. Something they can understand by observation instead of something that scientists with high-tech equipment have to explain to them, and even after it's explained to them, it still feels really abstract. This approach is basically the polar opposite of you know, what Charlotte Mason taught in her schools. When the kids were really young, they would learn about these sort of like broad categories of what we, we would think of as low-hanging fruit, like birds, flowers, and trees. Because let's just be honest, like every time you go outside, you're probably going to see unless it's like winter, I guess you're not going to see flowers in the winter. You're probably going to see birds, flowers, and trees, and they're fascinating, and I think that's a great place to start. And I think it is important to know the names of them and what they are, because that's how you are going to find out more information about them. And it's interesting, too, like most people, you know, if, how many birds outside can you name like okay like robins ducks crows geese let's just be honest like i didn't even start paying attention to birds at all until i was like 30 plus years old and they're fascinating and they're right there they're very easy to observe so okay probably wondering like yada yada i get it but where do i actually start with learning this so if it's not going to come as a surprise to anyone, I recommend you read about it. And there's a few different approaches I think you can take to reading about it. Okay, so the first thing, I would choose one category of things that you're interested in that you would like to know more about so you can enjoy it more. So I, a couple of years ago, I decided that thing was going to be birds and I was going to try to learn about the birds in my area because honestly there's not that many. I think with birds a good way to start is just look up like the 10 or 15 or 20 most common birds in your area and just start paying attention because I didn't pay attention at all to birds until I realized that I didn't know know what they were or anything about them or what kinds there even were right outside my house. So with birds, you can get a bird feeder. I may make another video about bird watching and how to actually go in depth with that. But if you choose that you wanna learn about trees or flowers, I really highly recommend you download an app on your phone. It's called Seek. And even if you don't wanna you know, learn about flowers, but you just are out on a nature walk and you see a really cool flower, you can download this app you take a picture of it with the Seek app, and then it tells you what it is. And then when you go home, you can learn more about it. And my favorite resource for learning about specific species of things is, and everyone knows about this already, well, not everyone, but it's very popular, The Handbook of Nature Study by Anna Comstock. People get really intimidated by this book because it's so thick, but I don't really recommend reading it the whole way through. I think it works really well if you see something and then you can look it up in here and read more about it or for whatever category of things that you choose to that you want to learn about just read that section and read about like one thing every day or two cuz the sections are pretty small. I think that's a really great way to learn. The second book or group of books that I'm going to recommend is the Arabella Buckley books. And these are about different categories like pond life, insect life, trees, birds, plants. They're written for kids, but they're very engaging. They were actually described as a lecture. So I think that the cool idea with it, these are, these are less about specific species and more about general ideas of what those birds do. So if you're gonna read one book about your topic, these are really thin. You could read this in like a day or two. Even if you don't wanna read them to yourself, read them to your kids. I really don't think you're gonna regret it. Um, the third book or category of book, you may wanna get like a seasonal type of book. So this is called The Spring of the Year 
by Dallas Laura Sharp. He was an American writer. These are from 19, uh, 1912. So over 100 years old, but like very engaging. These are also for kids, but I think moms could learn a lot from reading this. And what's cool about reading a seasonal book is it just gives you kind of a general guideline of things that you should be looking for in that season. Um, another one is Countryside Rambles by Fernow. He was an English writer. This one is really good for just kind of not necessarily learning about specific things since some of the species may be different, but just kind of opening your eyes to some of the things that may be happening throughout the year, also organized by season and I think you would really benefit from it. Yeah, so one more thing I'm gonna talk about that you could do, I think you would really benefit from it. Just don't get overwhelmed. Because I think like you're on a nature walk and there's plants everywhere, especially if you're if it's the middle of summer and everything's like in full bloom. I think our tendency is that like we feel like we have to know everything at once. But if you just start with one thing that you want to know about, um, like it's going to build on each other. And it doesn't happen overnight, but it is something that I think is really worth taking the time to do. So yeah, even if, I think another, another really good, one more idea I had, you could go outside and just identify all the different trees in your yard. And you may have never even noticed how many trees you actually have but there's you know there's a lot but not so many that you can't learn every tree in your area and what it looks like and its fruits and its leaves and its flowers in like a year and that's kind of what's cool about it uh, one more resource that I really like is if you're gonna get field guides I really like these golden field guides I don't really love the <laughs> the vintage ones that you find at the thrift store all the time. Um, they're very cute, but the bindings tend to fall apart. So if you are like looking online and you have a chance to buy new copies, I would maybe go that route because these get a lot of use in my house. My kids are always looking at them and they have a tendency to fall apart. So yeah, I think I, I hope that was helpful. Choose one thing to focus on and learn one thing at a time and in a year or two you will be really amazed at what you know and you will think how did I ever not notice this because nature is beautiful. I think it's really important that we become acquainted with God's creation, that we step outside ourselves and give this gift to ourselves and our children and really open our eyes to how beautiful the world is. Because it's like, you know, it didn't have to be like this, but it is, and it's really a blessing. Let me know if you have any questions about all of this. I'm gonna link every resource I mentioned in the comments. Um, let me know if there's another resource you like that I missed. That's all I have for you. Thanks.